Hey there, Eddie and Deviants, Junior Adventures and Friends. Welcome to this very, very special zero session, zero, I can't even speak, zero session, episode zero of the Dicey Bastards. I'm MK Gibson, better known to y'all as Gibby, authors of such books as Technomancer, Shadow Master, series and a few others, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for this very special zero game. And with me today is just one member, friends, just one member of the cast, because that's all we're going to need for today. Steve, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi there, I'm Steve Weverell, and I'll be playing Stan Dandyliver, professional folk hero, uh, to a given value of professional, giving his ignomious exit from Salty Bastards. And I'm also authors of books such as uh, Brandon Firemaster and The Dude Cruise, the most recent addition to the Brandon Firemaster Botology. Go check that out. And for you people who are not English, that's Thigh Master. Don't look up. Don't look it up with an F. You'll never find it. That's T H, Thigh Master. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I can't help but pick that's up. That's fine. <laughs> These people are going to be listening to me for this entire episode. So um, get used to it. Get used to my weird thought and duh sounds. <laughs> and you got to get used to my my uh, my jilted uh, American Hugh Grant stutter that I have. <laughs> Anywho. Our goal for this new campaign is to bring something special to you, uh, A and Deviants and Junior Adventures. Not the friends so much. Those you're for Robert Bevan. But <laughs> we want you to know it's the same A and D content that you love. Just a slight twist. This is a new beginning of a new campaign, something very special that we've been working on, and we can't wait to show you more. But uh, first of all, I don't want anybody to worry. Uh, this will, of course, eventually devolve into your favorite crotch-based humor and content. I have of that I have no doubt whatsoever. No matter how falutin I try to put on, these guys have a falutin allergy, and they will bring the crotch. So uh, let's not worry about that. I love but that. For now. that you're just you're just wondering about the poor listener just huddled by his 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 <laughs> old timey radio. But mother, there'll still be penis jokes, right? <laughs> mother, there's still be cock jokes <laughs> and butthole humor. I'm like, Don't worry, dear. They're A and D. They always do that. <laughs> I like the van jokes, mother. <laughs> I, have to, I listened to the Salty Bastards. Everything was about flesh and cock. <laughs> are we getting more of that, aren't we? You know. Uh, pr- uh, oh, please I, here's say the, it'll we be are. There. <laughs> <laughs> as I was telling Steve, I like to run things as a straight man. Let them make the cock jokes. I will uh, I'll present it in a normal fantasy fashion and let them fuck with it. Because when everyone's a comedian, no one's a comedian. So my job is to be the straight man. All right. We'll see, Gibby. We'll get you making some fleshy hey, jokes. <laughs> Don't worry. I've, I've hidden stuff inside. Don't you worry about me, <laughs> sir. All right. Is everybody ready? By everybody, I mean you, Steve. Oh, specifically I me. Mean, this is a lot of pressure. Yes. Yes, I'm All ready right. for it. All right. Let me... da, 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 da. Greetings. I want to tell you a story. A story of great heroes. Warriors. Warriors in their prime. I want to tell you the story of living gods, gods among men, people who will do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. (laughs) Well, I can't. Trust me, I would love nothing more than to regale you with the tales of an important, amazing, virile man, a leader. But that's not this tale. This is the story of the world's greatest has been and never will be. William Billy Snot, a.k.a. Henry Henry Galahad but known to the absolute worst people of the realm as Stan Dandeliver. I'm I'm not saying he's worthless, but dear God, it, it, it it's like watching it's like it's like watching a toddler discovering his own penis and then sh- shape just wagging it at every living thing that goes whoa, around. Whoa, it, whoa, it, whoa. It, it baffles me like, it baffles me how bad this man is. It just it, it, uh, uh, yes. I'm what sorry. is going yes. on here? Known uh, to the oh, worst people as Stan Dandy Liver. What is happening with the grammar yeah, in my head? I, I, I'm just... You can hear me. Oh, uh, oh, oh Wait my, a minute. Um, hello? I, I assumed you thought that I could no, hear you. This, Otherwise, this, why are you being such a prick? It's very personal what you're saying there, voice in my head. Uh, well, it's... Stan, it's time we had a talk. This is your conscience. We haven't spoken in a very 
very, very, very long time. Um, well, there's a reason for that. I don't need you. Well, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, just, I mean, look at this image. Look at these images of these would-be heroes like this, uh, ready to fight a, a, a green dragon. And uh, what have you done? You. Why am I saying this? Am I still stoned? I, Oh, you're actually quite hungover from the night before. But I, back to my point, like, do you, you always wanted to be something, Stan? You wanted to be more than what you are. You wanted to rise up from that little street urchin that you were and become a, a hero of uh, not just in your own mind, but in actual reality. But what did you do? Uh, hey, buddy, I was a hero in actual reality, like quite a few times. Your, your last several years of life, you sailed around on the SS Jackoff with the masturbation crew. Do you remember that? It was like murder robots and and stone people and little punching tiny men. It it, it was disgusting. It was disgusting. Sometimes you roll a bad hand. I mean, you're all that you hang with. I just, I picked a bad crew. Oh, you pull your head out of your ass, Stan. That was ungodly. You know, it it seemed to stretch on for years, even though it was only, it felt like only like 19 episodes, but it felt like it went on forever. I know, yes. It did seem a lot longer than the actual events of the adventure would have you believe. But oh my God, I, I'm still amazed you can hear me after all this time. I've been talking to you forever saying, don't do that, Stan. Yet you always did. I couldn't. I'd say, don't go left. And sure as shit, that's the way you went. I, 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 hmm. Hey, look, I trust my inner voice. It just, yeah, I don't well. know my inner voice to be such a judgmental prick. This is new. <laughs> what did I drink last night? Well, I mean... You say that you were once a, you a great folk hero. For, well, since I, well, since you can hear me, let me remind you. It has been two years since the S t- till that those people that we won't mention, you know, the jerk off crew. Um, and what have you done since then? Did I call let me them remind the jerk off crew? I'm sure we had an actual name. Were I'm, we the I, jerk off? We might have been the jerk off crew. I just put it in my oh, head, God. Ken, that's what I called us, you know, since, you know, we're the same person. I just. I mean, I fought it, but I, I never said it out loud. Well, of course not. You're not supposed to. Uh, why would you no. do that? Uh, what I'm saying, Stan, is like, okay, let me take you down a trip down memory lane. You oh, God. got. After the, after everything was over in the halls of flesh and your your friends went their separate ways, you returned back to the land of Tottenshire, the quaint little region uh, where you grew up. Quiet hamlets and sleepy villages. And along the coast lies the town of Galahad, where you hailed from. You had money in your pocket. And what did you do? You lost it all. Do, do you remember this, Stan? You know, zoom back a little. Let, let the folks see this. Like, for, you know... For those who, outside of your mind, who might just be listening to this, um, I had a character sketch drawn of Stan, drunk in the streets, asking, like, he's saying that he would, <laughs> he would folk hero for food or man whore when his freight's available. And you... Listen here, voice. Uh-huh. There's, a, there's a reason I drank what I drank. And it <laughs> certainly wasn't to fucking remember shit. Clearly, that's why I had this uh, this this caricature commissioned of of that particular night in the alleyway. <laughs> do you why remember that? Why would you do that? <laughs> um, I'm your conscious. You call me Connie if you need to call me anything. Um, no, I'll call you something, friend. Uh, well, I call you many things, and yet you never, never listen. <laughs> oh, I but wish I could go back to that sweet, sweet ignorance. <laughs> oh, am I even awake? No, I have more in store for us than. That, that, that what has come in the past i this stan we're not getting any younger i mean just have you looked at oh, ourselves that's, recently that's true yeah you know you know if people get a second or sometimes a third chance in life you're well past that my friend you are well past that i am a man known to take more than his fair share of chances all right who uh, your little voice went up on a little inflection there were you trying to impress me because it's not working. I, you try to. Uh-huh. Am, I, am I trying to impress a voice in my own head? This is fucking drastic, isn't it? Uh, you're trying to impress us, Stan. It's time we take a swim in Lake U and really get to the core. It sounds a bit unhygienic. It, it, you want unhygienic? Folks, <laughs> as I was saying, this is the tale of Stan Dendeliver, a once up and coming folk, folk hero. He turned a lord. Now he's an aged hey, joke. Are you going to talk? You, no. I'm I up speaking. and came, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about unhygienic. <clears throat> Stan, I want to let you know the sun is about to rise in the little town of Tottenshire. Oh, God. And normally this is where I would do the cock a doodle doo of a crow. <laughs> but, um, well, let's just say that at the end of the street of mud by two 
two tooth hook two tooth hooker alley lies a a, a particular bar named known as the castrated ram and instead of the cockadoodle do you get to wake up to the sound there we are the sound of two fat two fat rats fucking that is that's what we woke up to welcome back to <laughs> welcome to consciousness stan welcome to your room oh well i know i got rat ass last night but this is ridiculous <laughs> Still, yes, lo- love is love, right. I suppose. <laughs> the castrated ram, oh. known as the third best, uh, no, known as the third best tavern in all of Galahad. Well, unfortunately, there are only three taverns in all of Galahad, and again, yours true. is at the end of the street of mud and two tooth, two tooth. I can't even. That's a hard one to say. Two tooth hooker alley. Two tooth hooker alley. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you wind up in two tooth hooker alley, I mean. At the end of a Saturday night, you ideally want to be on Five Tooth Hooker Alley. <laughs> I, I, one can only imagine. And mm. it is here where the story not begins, just continues for our friend Stan Dan. Not even a beginning. <laughs> In his a room. Continuation. Above the castrated ram, brothel and tavern. It is the crack of dawn, and Stan is terribly hungover. As I said, there's no rooster effects, just. The sweet, sweet thumping, rhythmic thumping of two fat rats going to town. Stan, the stage is yours. How are you feeling? Well, at least somebody's getting laid. Yeah. And uh, how am I feeling? Uh, this this floor space not kind on the uh, on the back. Need to do it, uh, stretch up a bit. See if I can do this without feeling weird in front of I. I feel like I'm interrupting these rats. Maybe I should just stand still for a while until they finish. But it's got some staying power. Oh, yes. I mean, it's, I don't want to tell you how long they've been going at it, but, I mean, let's just say you were used as, as a prop for a period of time. Oh, well, unconsciousness has its advantages. Yeah, that, there is, that is true. Um, I'm I'll add that to the myriad of stains. <laughs> yes, there... Uh, yes, that mattress has seen better days. I'm glad you got that outside of the uh Not the for me, it hasn't. Uh, no, no, I mean, well, um, question for you, Stan. Um, would you like to actually stay in your room, or would you like to go downstairs and take in the splendor that is your bar and tavern? You know, the top rat keeps looking at me. I'm, uh... <laughs> it's time for a drink. I don't know what time it is, but it's time for a fucking drink. Uh, it's the crack of dawn, like I've said on multiple occasions. <laughs> crack of dawn, sunset, who cares? Oh yeah, sure, it's it's drink time somewhere for someone. <laughs> All right, would you like to go downstairs into, just to be a dick, Stan. Uh, before we go downstairs, I want you, oh, can you please go to the window? I want you to go to your window. Would you do, do that for me, for your conscience? Well, you don't you've, want... you've said nothing that I enjoy so far, so yeah, why not? Look out the window. There we are. Stan, look out the window. Oh, yeah. That's where you used to live. Do you remember that, Stan? Yeah, and why did I pick this room? It seems like I'm trying to annoy myself. Did you pick this room? Voice in my head. Uh, why don't you, like, uh, minimize your screen just a slightly, or just uh, zoom a little less so that the, so the video phones can see? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> video phones? What the fuck are you talking about, voice? It's the wave of the future, Stan. Here, I'm going to move you up a little bit. There you are. There you go, buddy. Take it all in. Tell me, ah. tell your conscience what it was like when you were once a lord. You know what, conscience? You mm-hmm, and I mm-hmm. both know that was a different time. That wasn't Stan Dandy Liver. That was a different man. He's gone now. And whoever's living in that place now, well, let's just hope it's not as empty as it was. Speaking of empty... You hear two rats grunt in satisfied frustration. The one oh. falls on top of the other. The female looks a little disappointed, but appreciates the effort. Now, I'm sure oh, she's a female. Bro- oh, okay. Uh, uh, no, well, yeah. uh, I, who am I to judge? I, if you want to pick up, the, we can check the plumbing if you like. I'm not 100%. I did. I wasn't paying that close attention. Love is love. love. That is true, sir. Love is love. All right. Why don't we just go downstairs for a little bit? Oh, uh, you rats. You think you've... You think you're happy now in your honeymoon period. Let me tell you, one of these days, one of you is going to die. And then you'll just be a rat by yourself. 
uh, in this shitty room. Well, actually, now I uh, suppose I think about it. This room's probably quite nice for you. Do you want to do you want to elaborate, Stan? Because it feels like we're we're this close to a breakthrough. Would you, would uh, you like to go a little further? I'm not interested in a breakthrough. I'm interested in a drink, oh, maybe a, drink. a morning a breakfast cocktail. <laughs> I'm sure they have plenty of that downstairs. All right. You wander down the room. You wander down the stairs, bumping and bumping along all the. Uh, the uh, wood, uh, the, the water swollen wood, and you make your way down to the common room of the castrated ram. Uh, three of your old reliables are standing by. Uh, Rosie Cheeks, she's the mistr- she's your lead mistress of the uh, of the brothel that works uh, a couple rooms. All the other rooms upstairs are pretty much either <laughs> rooms for rent for the hour, and she's she's your uh, chief of uh, all that business. Uh, Trudy Goodnight. Uh, She is both your cook and your bouncer. If Trudy, the retired barbarian, ever has to come out of the back of the kitchen and stop cooking, it means bad times for somebody. Now, you inherited both of these people when you won this this bar in a game of cards from your good old Willie Pete, uh, the drunk dwarf who's passed out on top of the table, who uh, wants a powerful, powerful uh, uh, mage uh, and uh, fire fire magic specialist. Nowadays, he is, uh, well, he's in worse shape than you are, which you know, that's why he often spends most of his days and nights at the bar that he used to own, drinking up half your profits, uh, trying to score the hookers and sleeping on the tables. And that's where you see your, your uh, w- amazing uh, crew of uh, patrons that work for you. That's what I love about dwarfs. They're stubborns that are always true for their words, and they're uniformly shit at cards. <laughs> oh, uh, fuck you, Willie Pete says, and rolls back over, looking remarkably like John Hartness. No, oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I've had some bad crews in my time and some bad layers, but you know what? Uh, you guys ain't the worst. Trudy Goodnight gives you a look and then like slaps down uh, some breakfast ham and sauce because this is about the time you normally st- like stumble awake in your uh, hangover stupor from the nights before. She mm. doesn't say much, but she slams down uh, what appears to be a, uh, a a mead whiskey concoction. She cracks an egg into it and uh, some breakfast potatoes, ham and uh, uh, eggs as well on a steaming plate. Rosie is just kind of saying uh, goodnight to the girls who are like now wandering up the streets. Some of them are going to work some double shifts at other brothels. And she is some hard working girls. Oh, the hard working and guys, don't worry. You know, <laughs> at the castrated Ram, all are welcome and all pleasures are available. Yeah, but mostly guys just get it for free when it's up because let's be real. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Trudy. I shall, uh, Let's just scrape all the breakfast into the booze and stir it around with my dagger. <laughs> oh my god! All right, so you you uh, drink slash chew your way through your meal. <laughs> Rosie, good morning to you. If I were a younger man, you'd be in trouble. Ha ha! But I'm not. My my penis does not work. Oh, if you were younger, if you were a younger man, I would charge a double. <laughs> well, sure, probably. Well, that's because you're not drunk yet, and I certainly am going to be quite soon. <laughs> well, unless you need me, I'll, unless you need me for the rest of the day, I will uh, head back to my place, and I'll be back for tonight, per usual, where I'm again underpaid, understaffed. Oh, well, that's well, darling. We don't have enough goose fat for the for lubrication. I've asked you to put in orders for that many times now. I'm I shall sorry. find the fattest goose for your lubrication. Trust me. <laughs> Look at me. I'm awake. I'm upright. I'm going to get shit done today. Don't you worry about it, Rosie, darling. A big fat goose for you. <laughs> okay, we'll see about that. And I'm just going to minimize here. She's, she's, uh, Rosie's on her way out, so. Ta-ta, Rosie. Rosie leaves. <sighs> Trudy sits down in the uh, chair opposite you. And watches you chew drink all the work she just put into it. And have you ever seen like one of those like old like image like you ever seen one of those photos of like those old uh, uh, old Russian women who look like they can like bench press an entire salt mine? Uh, it, kind of like that. She is stout. She is thick. She is plump. She is strong. And uh, she's watching you waste all the food that she spent the morning making and put it into your beer. And she doesn't look happy. 
Now, Trudy, you may think I'm wasting this food, or but what you don't realise is I'm making an invigorating potion of wake the fuck up. Mm. She kind of grunts at you, takes the cup from your hand, takes a little sip and a chew herself, shrugs a little bit and passes it back over to you. Well, trust me. Trust me, Trudy, I've learned a few things in my time, and not to disparage your talents in any way, but sometimes... Uh, Name... Name seven. Expedience is the uh Name the seven things you've learned in your time. Uh, I have a hangover. Well, I've just learned that uh, rats are apparently very considerate lovers. Mm, she nods uh, at that that's, one. That's, that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, Rosie thinks she's a lot hotter than she is. Trust me. When I was a young man, she'd be all over me. Don't worry about that. Oh, yeah. She's, uh, she's totally like a... She's a... a, a this she's this town's version of an eight, but in like you know, like some other cities, she's like she's uh, a four. I've been, uh, no, we've both been around. We know this school. Let's not burst her bubble. No, I like her confidence and her work ethic. You know, she's skimming off the top, right? Uh, well, <laughs> that's what she gets paid for, if you know what I mean. It's a cock joke. It's a blowjob joke. Um, number three, never partner up with uh, an insane robot. That's another thing I've learned. Just generally don't trust AI to get mm-hmm. the job done. It eliminates the human element. Things get very complicated very quickly. Trudy looks like she's actually taking notes on this. Like, not physical notes, but you can see she's jot- this mentally jotting all this down in her head. Mm. Never pay a gnome to be your personal bodyguard. They don't give a shit. They've got, they've got very limited uh, worldview on doing shit for money. They don't care. Let me see. What else have I learned? I, I realized that I've just, there's a lot I've learned in the last couple of years from one very specific group of fucks. As I call them, the SS Jackoff. <laughs> Connie says in your voice. Oh, says, yeah. excuse me, the Connie's voice, uh, your conscious voice says in your head. Trudy, it's been a very long evening. Are you hearing a annoying voice that isn't mine? Looks over at Willie Pete, who grumbles, farts, and rolls back over on the table. She gives a kind of shrug. Hmm. It's probably dementia. Fuck. I was hoping for at least another couple of years before that rolled in. Oh, I'm not going anywhere, Stan. I'm I'm here for quite some time. Don't you worry about that, none. Uh, but just for my curiosity, would you be so kind as to roll me a perception check? Perception check it is. <laughs> it's not. It's not hard to notice. For uh, a hangover, that's not bad. <clears throat> no, that's actually pretty good. Especially considering the hangover. Uh, there is one section of your bar that's a little bit nicer than others, but there is a gentleman sitting there that is way too well-dressed for this establishment. This, He is sitting there quietly to himself, sipping what appears to be ugh, water and uh, having a small meal. Um, Trudy looks over at him, gives you the thumb like, we showed up just before dawn. And then she goes in back into the, uh, Trudy goes into the back of the kitchen and starts uh, preparing for the morning lunch, excuse me, the morning breakfast lunch, uh, breakfast rush and lunch lunch. I can't speak today. Brunch. <laughs> she's going to cook some shit. She's going to, yeah, she's going to start, she's going to start the brunch. Ready for the brunch crunch. Yeah, ready for the brunch crunch. And yeah, so there's a, there is a very fine uh, dressed gentleman sitting off in the corner of the bar on his own. And you are now left with just Willie Pete, who still is past the fuck out. Uh, on one of the t- uh, bar tops. Hmm. Now, how hungover is Stan? This looks. Uh, give like me a constitution a... check. Let's just see how careless he is. <laughs> one. Natural one. Um, <laughs> everything that you were eating and drinking, and everything at once, kind of all of a sudden just comes up all at once. It every it, it is. Hey, Trudy, uh, did that fella at the bar leave his name? Oh. Yeah, a viscous f- torrent of uh. all the booze from the night before and the chunky remains of everything you just chewed up and swallowed, uh, which she warned you not to do, uh, comes up all over the bar top, uh, under your pants, onto the floor, and uh, you're in no shape to go talk to this fine gentleman just yet. Uh, would you like to go out back into the mm. alleyway and wash yourself wash yourself off in the horse trough? Well, I did say it was an expedient breakfast. 
That is true. Both ways, apparently. Yeah, Stan will take a walk. And not just, but I think now he's probably sobered up a little bit now that he's puked up everything in his system. Uh, yeah, the, the gentleman that's sitting in the corner catches your eye and he kind of gives you a look up and down. It's like, you get the feeling like it's not the time just yet. He wants to talk yeah. to you. It's, that's, that much is obvious. But why don't you step out into the back of a two-tooth hooker alley and uh, clean yourself off a little bit. We'll do that. And he'll keep a, a wary eye. This is All right. a, nobody's looked for Stan in a while. This is an no. unusual situation. Very much so. I, I don't blame you at all. Um, uh, do you want to call out to Trudy and see if she'll come clean up the vomit? <laughs> uh, Trudy, don't <clears throat> look at the bar. You hear this sigh. Give me a... Uh, <sighs> what's, what, I can't what's, imagine Trudy's going to be very pleased. No, uh, she... give, oh, I'm trying to think of the best check for this. Uh, per, give me a persuasion roll. Persuasion, here we go. <laughs> Trudy, everything is absolutely fine out here. Don't be angry with me for any reason. Ta ta. Uh, you hear the sound, a familiar sound of mop, bucket, and everything coming at once because I hate to say this, Stan. As your, <clears throat> as your conscience, this is, um, well, this is not the first time. In fact, this is kind of the status quo for a has been such as ourselves. Every day, a new adventure. As Stan walks back out of the back of the, the castrated ram, he steps into the backside of Two Tooth Hooker Alley. Uh, much to his surprise, it is. He's not the only one washing himself off after a hard night of work. Uh, Hooker Alley is renowned for many things, mostly hookers, mostly for being an alley. Uh, you look about and all the hookers are doing their morning horse baths, doing exactly that. Horse troughs, washing buckets, cleaning themselves off. They're all oh, their fun nether bits and hard nights work with a few coins jingling here about. And they all look at you and you get the kind of like wave of only old friends can give. Stan, Stan, hey, Stan, Stan. What's up, Stan? Ladies, oh, rough one. gentlemen, never hard mm. day's night. Mm hmm. Uh, you know it hard all the way. And the two guys high five. Yeah. The girls roll their eyes like, like, uh, even boys, even boy hookers are still boys. That's right. Ah, uh, is everybody feeling, uh, refreshed this morning on this rather dewy morning? Are we feeling not so sticky as we once did? My asshole's killing me. Mm, true. Well, you know. Enjoy it while you're young, my friend. Some, in some time, uh, your asshole will be killing you for no reason. Not even any of the good parts. One of the That's hookers, what... the, one, the, the buxom blonde to your left, she kind of gives you a look. She's like, is everything okay, Stan? You seem a little down. Oh, I suppose everything's okay, except that my life trajectory has not really turned out how I want it to be. Uh, not doing much folk heroing at the minute, more just like not even fuck heroing, just... The, this other hooker who looks a lot like uh, Holly, but is actually her sister Molly, works at a competing brothel. She, it's it's a big, long thing. Molly comes Molly. up to me like, she's you know, Staniel, how are you? Um, you what, what do you mean your life didn't work out? Tell me about it, honey. Well, I'd, uh, you know, I used to be pretty good. And I thought I could just maybe be pretty good again. And turns out it's a lot harder than I was imagining. I mean, I'll be honest, you've been okay. I mean, I've, I've had far worse. Oh, I'm not talking about that sort of thing. Uh, I like a silver fox, you know, and it's it, you know I like that it takes a little bit extra effort to you know get the the flagpole raised if you don't mind, if you don't mind. You, you are very patient, then I do appreciate that, darling. Oh, you're welcome. But uh, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, it used to be a time. I mean, put it this way: this whole land is filled with wizards and warlocks. All the hookers are coming in to your, listen to your story because now they're invested. And all these magical bastards, some of them favoured by the gods, with unspeakable power, but most people are, well, I like to call them non-powerful chaps. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They're the people like you guys. They make the world go round. They do their jobs, they pay their taxes, and at the end of a hard day, they like to sit round the fire and listen to inspiring tales. And, you know, Stan Dandy Liver, he used to be one of those... This is going very well, Staniel. They are 
eating up every word that you're saying. Now, look at them. I mean, I bet you, I bet you we could get it. How much money do we have on us? You know, what do you get a seven way going? It's on? not about the money, voice. This is what we used to do. We used to. Well, I say that out yeah. loud. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And they all kind of look around like, here's the thing. They're used at this point. You're you're cute. You're like uh, you've reached that age where you're you're at a certain age to them anyway that. You could legally steal whatever you want, fart, and no one would care. And you're you're that cute old man, and it kind of hurts. It kind of hurts a lot, actually. Uh, it's like yeah, there's one or two that's still like a grandpa chaser, but mostly they just kind of see you as the grandpa. So, hmm, I see this in their eyes. This the point I'm making, guys, is ah, <clears throat> girls, ladies. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Others in between. I don't know. Perhaps I'm just being silly. But you can all be whatever you want to be, I suppose. Oh, Stan. You're not you're not being silly. I mean, you're, you you we've heard your drunken stories. We know we know all about like some of your Oh, I I do not remember those, sorry. Oh, uh well, you you do like to drink and talk about the good old days, uh, uh folk heroing, um carving your own name into your wanted posters and um, you know, it kind of... That you know, is it, uh, it's a pretty cool move of mine, actually, yes. Uh, oh, we, those are the days. Uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of the hookers is who still has a cut on her two on her arms, like, oh, please don't. Ah, um, uh, yeah, go carried it. That was supposed to miss. That was just, just supposed to get the shirt and uh, not scar you. I, I think I've apologized for that already. Let's not... Oh, you, you, know. you, you have. It's, it's just the memory is still fresh, and, you know, mm. so is... And, you know, and it, so is the wound. <laughs> So get out like that. It's looking a little bit green. <laughs> but you know, you you still have it. I mean, we don't mean to be weird about this. And the, the hookers kind of look at each other and they all nod and like, listen, we kind of look up to you. You know, you 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 came back to where you're from. Like it's like it's like one of those fish that like I've I've heard stories of fish that like they go downstream to live their life and they come back to spawn and die. And that's what you are. You're like that old fish to us. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you've been out and you've seen the world. Now you've come back. And that's that's kind of like an inspiring story for us. Oh. And as as far as your conscience is concerned, that's fucking horrible. <laughs> that is not what we want that is, at uh, all. I've heard of those fish. Most of them get eaten by bears, you know. There's, either, there's two ways that turns out. Either you get laid or you get eaten by a bear. I didn't I didn't know that part. Um. Oh, wow. Um. But, okay, so one of the other hookers. Not great odds. No. <laughs> uh, 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 Trudy comes over and she's like, I don't know what I named her. I'll just call her Trudy. Trudy says, but, you know, you might have it in you again. Like, just, okay, for, just for example, just, I mean, a couple Trudy, of Trudy, my ago, darling, pay your cards right and you might have it in you again. Ha <laughs> ha! Still got it. <laughs> high five. The guys in the back, high five. My ass nice. still hurts. <laughs> But uh, she, Trudy's like, but, you know, just about a couple hours before dawn, this really weird guy came walking through Hooker Alley. Um, and he was specifically looking for you. So we, we pointed the way, um, you know, so clearly you're getting the attention of people who are higher up than we'll ever be. You know, uh, he's kind of hard to miss. Gentleman mm. dresses very fancy and he ha- kind of has glowing red eyes. Well, call me a cat's arsehole, because it seems like I've got a tail on me. Uh, yeah. Um, sorry about that, but you know, I I told him exactly where you were. I mean, like literally mm. the like down to the, the because again, the wound is still fresh, and you know, I know yes. you apologize, but this is what we call turnabout. So I see. Okay. Yes. Um. Well, none of this bodes particularly well. I made a lot of enemies in my old life, and uh, well. Hell, probably best just to go meet him purely for nostalgia's sake. Well, um, do you want to wash the vomit off yourself first? Because you look horrible. Ah, uh, no, fuck it. Okay. I'm not barging into his living room. <laughs> you know, that's a... Uh, stand on, I agree. That is a very fair assessment. Should yeah. we go meet with a strange, stranger man of Strangerton? Let's do it, voice in my head. And if it be deaf, fuck him. That's right. Fuck him. We can make something of ourselves. I believe in it. All right. You go back inside your bar. Uh, the, the floor is, it's cleaned up. I mean, tell you what, uh, <laughs> 
your staff knows what what you do so they took care of it lickety split all right you walk into the actual nice section of your bar and there sits a man and i will blow him up for the screen for the fans at home who are watching on the youtubes do you on the audio sorry you, you don't get to see but i'll describe him to you Fater of the mind there's a gentleman who's approximately six feet tall maybe six foot two um he's got uh, tannish brown skin, uh, fiery red. His hair, it's its dark, but actually the highlights are kind of like an orangey red. And it's not just he has red hair. They literally like, it is fire-like. Um, inside of his eyes, two small embers of flame crackle and dance. He has a very, he is very well-dressed. He has a like a, a, a purplish gentleman's uh, coat and waistcoat on and a jacket matching uh, slacks. And he's sitting there in the, Sitting in the chair, drumming his fingers, when he sees you coming, he stands up and offers you his hands. Hello there. My name is Jovan Heidelreich. At your service. And he clicks his heels together. Hi there, Jovan. If you think you're the first enigmatic man with glowing eyes to track me down, I'm afraid you're part of a long line of enigmatic men. <laughs> but how do you do anyway? Uh, I am well, sir. How are you? It's, it's, uh, this is a nice establishment. Uh... So I know if you click out, if you click anywhere in the map, it'll take out, it'll take that zoom. You'll have to excuse me. I'm covered in vomit. This is just, uh, I, I, I've I watched, I, I know, uh, Jovan watched you, um, uh, uh, saw yourself while you were talking to your staff there. It's a morning routine. It's, uh, it keeps me young. Detoxifying, I believe they call it. I, 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 perhaps that is in, your, in this country. I, it may, maybe I sure. Let's say yes. Yes. Let's say yes. Yes, I think so. Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Dandy Liver, I, I, I beg a moment of your time. Oh, no need to beg, fellow. You can just borrow it. <laughs> I, Jovan sees what you do there. That, very clever. Jo, Jovan approves. I think so. Uh, everything you're getting off the vibe, if you want to do an inside roll, you can see you know, what you're picking up from, because he's definitely putting down a charming fellow, but whether or not you believe it, that's up to you. So you want to give me an insight roll? Let's do it. 23 natural, natural 20 actually all right so charming um, fellow uh, i'm afraid i got he, that covered Gibby. truly he there's nothing menacing about him other than the fact that he has glowing fiery eyes um he is dressed in a purple suit and everything about his character screams villain it's a nice suit but other than that he seems affable and actually generally pleased to see you um he seems he seems to like everything he's saying right now seems to be on the up and up hmm but that is kind of like a, a villain trait Oh, well, perhaps. Uh, you want to do me a, do me a favor and give me a uh, uh, either give me a history or arcana, whichever one is uh, you're better at. Hmm, I don't think I'm particularly great at either of them. Let me see. Or general intelligence rule that'll work as well. <laughs> Technically, I should be better at that, but we'll see. Eighteen. Holy shit. Oh, no, 22. Oh, you did a saving throw. It doesn't matter. Uh, What you're seeing before you is uh, a fire genasi. Uh, The genasis are um, people who can trace their lineage back to actual jinn and genies, uh, one for each of the elements. Fire genasis oftentimes appear to have, like, uh, fiery hair, fiery eyes, you know, anywhere skin between tan to ruddish, ruddish to brown to almost to crispy black. Just depends on uh, the particular where they come from. And this gentleman sitting before you is, in fact, a uh, a fire genasi. All right. Well, I don't recall having pissed off one of them recently. So this is more relaxed. Oh, yes, please. Uh, uh, Jovan wishes you to sit down. Would you care to sit down and have a, a quick chat with me? I have a business proposition for Mr. Uh, Dandy Liver, which is you. Haha. <laughs> Jovan made a joke. I appreciate the joke, Johan. Uh, hmm, a business proposition. Oh, I wish I'd worn my non-vomity business pants, but uh, sure, let's talk turkey. I'm sure. The, I'm sure the hookers in back alley will wash you off for a small fee. Ah, uh, they certainly will. But I can wait till the afternoon tea time. As you wish, sir. As I said, my name is H- Jovan Heidelreich. I am representing a, a patron of sorts. Uh, Lady Zlagenia. Um We come from the island of the island country to the south, known as Stratum. Have you ever heard of it? Heard of? Never been there. Always been a little bit out of the way of my patch. Yes, it is. You know, you travel to the south of this continent, and then you sail additional week at, 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 at the at the sail, the water, and the ups, and then the downs, and then you get to uh, then you 
get to extract them. Uh, island nation, some places called Birth of Monsters, but it's actually a very lovely country. It's very beautiful. Um, mm, I've heard one of those things to be true, yes. <laughs> you just, I, st- uh, you have a lot of proofs. Um, if you are interested, we have business proposition. We are looking for a man who knows how to get things done quietly, perhaps not necessarily legally, uh, which is why we tend to haunt uh, back alley bars, odds and brothels. But whenever someone who is not, as, as you know, normal people say, normal people who have jobs and taxes, you know, yes, Jovan was listening. I'm a sneaky man. The non-powerful um, chaps. Yeah, I know who you mean. But it's not often powerful chaps end up in, um, he looks around the, the castrated ram, like um, places like these. Normally they have uh, big adventures and they get money and they they raid the dungeons and then they get the they get the uh the, the fame the fortune and all the, the vagina and wang that they wish and now you have paid for vagina and wang uh well yeah i've done all that you're looking for a uh, an infiltration man of some kind yes uh, yes. Now, to be fair, you're not only one. I've, you know, Jovan and his crew, on behalf of uh, Lady Lazenia, has, we've made offer to many people. So don't think, but you, you are special, yes, obviously. Lovely hat. I love it. But you are not only crew is not that. Uh, out there. You know, we want a job done, and the first person who gets the job gets the money. Hmm. Sounds like you're offering to pay me an exposure. Uh, no, I actually pay you uh, 50,000 gold if you get job done. Hmm, joke's on you. I would have taken the exposure. But um, 50,000 gold seems fair. It's two for. Well, right. well regardless of... Uh, tell me a little more about the job. All right, if you are interested. Now, once Jovan begins to tell you, to tell you the job, you are either in or you are out. So this is catch 22 and a half, my friend. Stan looks around... At the farting dwarf and the vomit mm-hmm. on his trousers and his mm-hmm. collapsing bar. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm in. All right. He sits. He sit. He gets a really adjusted into his seat and the um, steeples his fingers. The job is simple. We would like you and a crew of your choosing. You know how you split the money is your business. You lie to them, say hey, five gold. I don't care. You keep the rest for yourself. I, I Jovan does not care. But we want you to travel to Strachtum. Uh, there, the first city on the edge is a northern port known as Blago Gulch. It is a well-respected and idyllic location for the affluent, um, uh, uppity uppities, um, rich people with money and tourists. It's, it's a beautiful place. It truly is nice. Once you are there, we want you to locate the villa of Ivan von Arslock. Well, he is not Arslock. the mayor. Ars, Arslock. Ivan von Arslock. Arslock. Ars, I think we're losing something in translation. Carry on. No, carry it, on. It's his name, Ivan von Arslock. Yeah. Arslock. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> if you say so. Ivan, if you're making joke, Ivan is on it, <laughs> right over my fiery head. It's fine. Arslock's probably a very normal name where you're from. Well, my name is Jovan Heidelreich, so yes, Arslock, he's a very... It's. I mean, he's... This is not the point. Arslock is considered not the mayor of Blago Gulch, but he is a very influential man, a very vastly wealthy man, um, philanthropist. He's the kind of guy who has so much money he gives it to the poor. <laughs> he spits. Uh, but <laughs> Arslock is not without his hubris. He allows uh, guided tours to see his various treasures and artifacts he's collected over his adventuring career. Hmm. Folly. Say what? Sounds like folly to me, but oh, there you I go. said parlay. I saw the pirate hat, and I thought you said parlay. Okay, well, that's what you're doing. Well, oh, right. no, we're, we're fairly landlocked right now. Oh, oh, right. Well, your hat says differently, sir. All right. Well, it's a nice hat. It, oh, it is beautiful. I like it. Your haberdasher. I need. I need their contact information. Oh, they died ages ago. Oh, that's sad for the haberdasher. It All is right. sad. Yeah, everybody dies. It's fucking annoying. Oh, do you need a drink? You look sad. Uh... Yes, the both of those. <laughs> yeah, it's my uh, bar. Stop offering me a drink. Oh, oh, fair. All right. Your mission is to infiltrate the villa of Ivan von Arslock and steal one specific treasure from his vault. Infiltrate called... the Arslock, steal its treasure. Again, you're making jokes that Ivan does not understand. But I, yes, I but just... I'm enjoying myself. That's the yeah, important thing. Actually, Carry on, please. Jovan, anyway. Uh, 
It is called the Tooth of Tiamat. Hmm. Re- reportedly a dragon tooth from the great dragon Tiamat herself. Now, what is true or not true, we don't know. But we want it. Now. No, I can see why. Once you have the Tooth of Tiamat, you would then travel inland, uh, deeper into uh, the, cap- the capital of, this, of uh, Strachtum, known as Zelengrad. It's a huge city on the banks of the Verat, which is a gigantic great lake, right in the middle of a whole fucking island. It's huge. All right. You will bring the Tooth of Tiamat to Lady Zlazenia at her mansion, whereupon you will be richly rewarded with 50,000 gold, plus bonuses if it's done in a quick, quickly, because there is ticking clock. Oh. As you may know, that today is the summer solstice, longest day of the year. Six months I, from now. I definitely the, knew that. Uh, yes. Oh. Don't, don't you notice the smell of hot, hot rat fucking in the morning? It's, it's disgusting. It's this heat I, of this country, doesn't it? I did wonder why they were so amorous. It explains a lot, yes. Six months from now in our, in our country is known as the Festival of Heroes. It's a huge celebration for all the adventurers and travelers and uh, the, the, the magic, your magic men type, you, you know, you're, you're those with power. Uh, Sounds come, right up my street. Every every year on, on the winter solstice is the not this street. Heroes. You mean not too? Oh no, too not this street. Around. Oh no, no, this street. I mean my is, sort I, of, you know, my. I, this street, I got hepatitis. Yes. Well, you you will get that. You build up an immunity eventually. Oh, that's that's disheartening on many many levels. It is. Yes. <laughs> Jovan is quite sad. Um, all right. So, Festival of Heroes is in six months. So you have to get the tooth. And get it back to Ladies Lagenia prior to that. City of Zelda. Festival of Heroes. Hmm. Well, I'm not gonna now, lie. Do you understand do you understand? Well, I understand what you've told me. Uh, I'm not giving a thought for the implications because actually I'm quite giddy. This sounds exactly like what I need to get my name back on the map. Oh, if you pull this off, no one will ever, ever not know the name of Stan Dandy Liver. Hmm. Well, I fought that once a long time ago. Turns out people have got fickle memories or they die. But this sounds like a doozy. A festival of heroes, a tooth of a dragon, a crew, a new crew. Hopefully one not filled with assholes. Hmm. Speaking of crew, I will, of course, need a generous upfront parent, uh, payment so I can recruit only the finest uh, minions. Oh, of course. He, um, knowing this ahead of time, he pulls out a pouch and drops it in front of you. Um, inside, uh, you know, if you feel free to count it, uh, all in platinum are is approximately a thousand gold pieces worth of platinum. Hmm. Stan will <laughs> Stan will do that thing where he's clearly containing an emotion that he doesn't want to show. It's <laughs> is it erection? Yeah. <laughs> yes. The table will move, but Stan's face <laughs> will remain impassive. <laughs> Is the table lifting? Is it, your tables are wobbly here? You might want to put napkin under the edge so it doesn't make the wibble wobble. Mm, yes. Tell me, my friend, did you ever hear of the Duke of Cockenshire? Is that one of the hookers down the street? I think I saw him. He's complaining about the, the painful asshole. No, it's a uh, well. It it's a small duchy, uh, but in between two uh, very vital trade routes, and the Duke himself he used to throw lavish parties. He was very vain man. This was back in my heyday when I used to masquerade as an aristocrat so I could pick better targets to rob. That's how I met my wife, actually, but that's a different story. Um, Anyway, I was at one of these parties, and this arsehole, who was treading quite fiercely on the necks of his subjects, he just, for no reason at all, apropos of nothing, unveils a gold lifestyle statue of himself just in the middle of the party. Everybody applauds. Do you know what I did? He takes out his pocket watch, looks at it, is like, you're going to finish the story up faster than before I get the hepatitis? Now, you've already got hepatitis, friend. It's, there's no getting away from that. I'm trying to make a point. Oh, they, I'm, I, Jovan is sorry. I, 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 I am bad listener. All right. Keep, continue your story of gold, of, of, of tales of, of, of youth gone by. Uh, I will. Thank you. Um, well, most people, they'd say they'd steal it. But if you steal it, all the that you has got to do is uh, harass the villagers, start kick down their doors until he finds the statue. So what I did is I broke in that very night with an ink and a pen, and I drew a big old cock on that statue's face. Now, 
You might say that's a little bit childish, a little bit churlish. And he's just got to wipe it off, and he did. But then I broke in the next night, did the same again. And the night after that, and the night after that. And this duke was hiring in new guards, tearing his hair out, putting this statue in all kinds of new secure places so he could find who kept drawing a big old penis on it. But he never did, and I kept on doing it. And you know what happened to him? He lost his fucking mind. And uh, last I heard, the Council of Elders had taken over that duchy, and they were doing pretty well. The point I'm trying to make is, stealing a gold statue, fucking level one shit. Stealing somebody's sanity, that takes talent. So. Is, yes, Jovan admits his amazing story, if, if even remotely true, because the amount of times you have to break in and the guards and how many times infiltration, it's a bull of shit is what I'm smelling. And besides, we need level one. So I don't need you to draw a dick onto the Tooth of Tiamat. I need you to steal actual Tooth of Tiamat. Uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty straightforward. The point I'm trying to make is that level of skill may be another one of these pouches. Uh, no, you, you, you get the one pouch. That, that is... Ah. That is Oh, well, I tried. Uh, yeah, but you, I mean, if you want to give him a persuasion roll, if you, here's the thing. Give, him a, give me a persuasion roll, DC 20. Okay, persuasion. Let's do this. Oh, 13. Well, to be let down. 13. Yeah. <laughs> so you wasted it earlier. It, no, it's a good story, and I, I believe you might actually be of... I tell you what, Mr. Dandy Liver, I will not give you another pouch of gold. Uh, my bad. But I will give you my thumbs up. Because of all the reprobates that I that Jovan has met, you are favorites. So I am wishing you the best. Remember, first team to actually bring uh, Tooth of Tiamat to Lady Lajenia gets the rest of the money. Uh, otherwise, we send people down to track you down and take our thousand gold back. Uh, good luck. Um, we wow, will be good watching. Good luck to you. <laughs> it, yes, uh, I'm going it's to go find to, to realize that while he's been talking, that pouch has disappeared really quickly. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I, uh, you know, good. I, I'm going to go find apothecary to clear myself of all venereal diseases that are clearly airborne and uh, mutating. Uh, uh, this I can feel chlamydia in my throat. So, uh, oh, you get I, used I, to you just yeah, they kind of scratch that out every night, really. I, I, Jovan is sad for you. Uh, he he stands up and straightens the lines of his suit, buttons his jacket. I wish you well, uh, Mr. Dandy Liver. Six months, Festival of Heroes. Make sure you are there. And you be sure to recruit good team because uh, <laughs> Mr. Ivan von Arslach's, uh well, he seems like a good man and, and lets people see his, his treasures. They are well guarded. And uh, we're going, you're going to need some ingenuity and some uh, amazing uh, feats of skill to uh, make away with Tooth of Diamant. I wish you well. He stands up, clicks his heels together, and gives you a slight bow. Oh, good to meet you, fella. Uh, yeah, don't worry about me getting a good crew. I'm sure I'll put together the finest band of reprobates this kingdom has ever seen. We're going to make some freaking legends, my friend. I'm excited. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I can almost I... feel my penis again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's driving into a wooden table. <laughs> Trudy, Rosie, uh... Fetch me some clean trousers. Stan Dandy Liver rides again. I say, Staniel, that uh, feels rather fortuitous, don't you think? Oh, you again. I, I yeah, thought I'm not going was... anywhere now. Are you kidding me? That erection was all me, baby. Oh, well, you've made that weird. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> fucked my hand quite a lot, but, but, but my hands never talked back to me and made it weird. You made it weird. What is? I've had less you know, prickish voices in my head, I'm sure. Yeah, yes, I've killed most of them and absorbed them. It's kind of like how a twin eats the other twin to become the only child. Uh, that is me. I, you know, I'm taking your fear, your loathing, your regrets, uh, you know, self-doubt. And I'm just, we're all uh, like Legion, but we are many. And I am all of them now. Uh, I'm not going anywhere because I have, listen, you little fuck. I've worked my ass off to get you to where you are and you fell from grace. This is our last shot. So Connie, the conscience is with you. Are you tracking me? Are you? Do you hear me? I will come out of you and fuck you up. I'm not really sure this is how conscious, <laughs> conscious is supposed to work. But we're on the same page, fellow. Oh yes, yes. No, we're gonna. We are going to need a crew. Absolutely. The final chapter of Stand Handy Liver is not going to be that uh, rather embarrassing fiasco. First, we'll need 
I hate to say it, as much as I'm on the side of the non-powerful chaps, we're going to need at least one magic user. And I think I know just a fellow to service that need. No, no, come on. There's certainly there has to be someone better than him. I don't know what to say. It just He disgusts me in every way, and his magic attacks are erratic, but I don't know. He's got style. He is magical. That is true. And that's what we want, right? Style. Whenever, wherever you go, people seem to like him. I cannot, I, for the life of me, I cannot figure this out. Hmm. This is not just about finding a crew to take a dragon tooth out of someone's ass. This is out, about building a story, something that's going to last this time. Well, do we even know where he's at? It's been two years. Uh, if I know anything about Jorcer the Sorcerer, Keeping a low profile is not his forte. That is true. That is true. But he did. He, I, I thought he ran off with the ugly woman. Well, yep. Yeah, that sounds like her problem. <laughs> well, whatever comes our way will definitely be fraught with danger. Because well, let's not use that language. We are going after Jocer. All right, fraught with semen. You're correct. <laughs> I meant whatever comes our way, but. But again, we're on the same page. Oh, I see what you did there. Well done. <laughs> I still got it. And all the time Stan is saying this, like the rest of the bar is just Oh, yeah. Staring. By the way, like <laughs> Willie Pete has rolled over. He's just been watching you talk to yourself this entire time. Trudy doesn't. Yeah, she's she's in the back of the kitchen. But yeah. Um, Willie Pete, keep the bar running for me. By which I mean, continue to sit there and drink yourself to death. It's been real. Uh, not a problem. I used to, you know, own the place. I know how to run it. Don't worry. It'll be safe. Oh, exciting times. We might have to kill Willie P. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and thus ends episode zero. Meet Stan Dandy Liver of the Dicey Bastards. Uh, we will be back next time when Stan takes on his greatest mission, locating and bringing Jorcerer the Sorcerer back into action. <laughs> Until then, on behalf of Steve Weatherall, I'm MK Gibson, and we thank you very much for tuning into this. I can't wait to see where this thing goes. I'm not going to lie. So Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, yeah, dude, I am too. All right, this has been the Dicey Bastards, and you guys have been great. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Dicey Bastards is brought to you by Authors and Dragons, podcast by geeks for geeks. If you'd like to support us or join a vibrant community of online weirdos on our Discord, please do donate at patreon.com forward slash authors and dragons. <laughs>